guys welcome back to my channel today we'll finish acids and bases um i'll do the homework from the last video and this video so all of the acids and bases in my next video uh today we'll speak about the constants so you have two types of constants one for acids one for bases uh it's known as k so ka for acid kb for base it's known as acid or base dissociation constant and the formula, it depends on the reaction. For example, you have an acid and you ionize it. So you will, uh, the equation will be Ka is equal to the reactants divided by the, uh, sorry, the products divided by the reactants. Water is always a constant, so you can cut that out of the equation. And you can also get mathematical um, calculations based on this equation. So they can give you, they can ask you to find Ka or the concentration of hydrogen, and you have to put all the other values in place and try to figure it out. Uh, for base, it's the same. You can take ammonia, for example, ionize it, and you will get Kb, which is the products divided by the reactants. Okay, the relationship is that the greater the K, the constants, Ka or Kb, the stronger the acid or the base. And just like we have a concentration of hydrogen and then pH, so whenever you have P, pH becomes minus logarithm of the concentration of hydrogen. The same way when you have Ka, you have pKa, and when you have Kb, you can have pKb. And it's the same, so pKa is the minus logarithm of Ka, and pKb will be the minus logarithm of Kb. The relationship between the p's is that the smaller the pKa's or pKb's, the stronger the acids on the bases. So the greater the Ka and the smaller the pKa, the greater the stronger the acid. Just like we have pKw is equal to uh, pH plus pOH the same way Kw is equal to Ka times Kb and then pKw which is the minus logarithm of Kw as we said p is minus logarithm will be equal to pKa plus pKb and we know that Kw is minus 10 to the power minus 14 and pKw then becomes 14 then Ka and Kb will be 10 to the power minus 7, or pKa and pKb will be 7, each under standard conditions. Okay, now we have a scale uh, depending on the pKa or the pKb. So we have less than 0, uh, we have 0 to 2, we have 2 to 10, 10 to 14, and greater than 14. Now very strong will be a pKa or a pKb of less than 0. Strong will be 0 to 2, weak will be 2 to 10, very weak will be 10 to 14, and then extremely weak will be greater than 14. Moving on to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is a very, very common question in the exam. We have two, one for an acid, one for a base, and the purpose of the henderson hasselbalch equation is to find the pH. So for acid, pH is equal to the negative logarithm of the constant for the acid. So pKa plus the concentration, the molarity of the um, salt or the conjugate base over the acid. This is a this is for a buffer solution or a solution where you have an acid and its conjugate base. If you want to write a negative logarithm, then you have to switch. When you want to switch the signs, you also have to switch the ratio, the equation. So then the acid goes on top and the conjugate goes on the bottom. And it is the same for the base. But um, we have a difference here for the base, the henderson hasselbalch equation for a base is pH is equal to pKw minus the pKb minus logarithm of the conjugate or the salt divided by the base. Again, if you want to switch the sign and make it a positive logarithm, then you also have to switch the ratio. Then it becomes plus logarithm of the uh, base over the conjugate or the 
salt. If the ratio of the acid or the base and the conjugate out salt is the same, like 1 is to 1 or 0 0.01 is the concentration of the acid and 0 0.01 is the concentration of the salt, if they are the same, then the henderson hasselbalch equation changes. Why? Because for acid, pH is equal to pKa plus log uh, conjugate over the acid. But because the ratio is the same, you can cancel out the whole second part of the equation. And then the only equation that remains will be pH is equal to pKa. And the same for the base. So pH is equal to pKw minus pKb minus log conjugate over base. So when the ratio is the same, you cancel out the log and then you only get pH is equal to pKw minus pKb. Now moving on to buffer solution. So what is a buffer? You need to think, you need to remember two properties. One is the fact that they can, they have the property of resisting uh, slight changes in the pH. And the second one is the actual definition of a buffer solution. What is it? It is the solution of a weak acid or a weak base and its conjugate salt or its conjugate um, acid or base. You can have two types of buffers. You have an acidic buffer where you have a weak acid and its conjugate base. Or you can have a basic buffer where you have a weak base and its conjugate acid. You need to know the pH of these things. So the blood is 7.34 to 7.44, the pH of the blood. That's the normal range. And then you can have the stomach where you it is normally 1.5, but it can vary from 1 to 3 sometimes. And there are two main buffers in our body. One is the carbonate buffer, which is in our blood and also in the lungs. So it is carbonic acid with the hydrogen. Carbonate. And then you have the phosphate buffer, which is in mainly in our kidneys, and it is the phosphoric acid. I will show you how the buffer system works. So, taking the carbonate buffer as an example, so when you have the addition of an acid or a base, which is what we do to buffer systems in order to resist the pH. So, for example, we'll start with the acid. Now, to an acid, what will react? The base will react with the acid, so the hydroxyl group will react with the acid. So, what do we get? We get the acidic form goes to the basic form, which is hydrogen carbonate. And you get water, which is neutral, so it neutralizes the compound. And if we have the addition of the acid, it will react with the base. So, the acid will react with the hydrogen carbonate, and you get the, from the base, it goes to the acidic form. So it forms H2CO3, carbonic acid. Okay, now let's speak about the buffer capacity. The buffer capacity is the resistance of the buffering agent to changes in the pH, and it is denoted as this, beta, let's say. So it is the molarity times the, divided by the change in the pH that occurs. So the molarity is the moles per liter of the solution, and it is positive for the base and it is negative for the acid. The greater the buffer capacity, the greater the resistance of the agent to the addition of an acid or a base, the greater the resistance to a change in the pH. We can draw a graph of the buffer capacity over the pH of the solution. So the buffer capacity is maximum when the ratio is 1. So when pH is equal to pKa for an acid or when pH is equal to pKw minus pKb for a base. Why? Because the ratio is equal to 1. There is no extra addition of um, the acid and base are balanced. So the buffer capacity is at a maximum. It is maximum at the midpoint of the titration of a weak acid and its conjugate or vice versa. And that was the last bit for today's lesson. Now we'll move on to the homework. So the first question is which of the following acids is the 
strongest. So you're given values of Ka and pKa, and you're given three different types of acids, HA, HB, and HC. So looking at the values, you have to say which one is the strongest. The next question is which of the following cannot be used for a buffer solution? Is it A, which is sulfuric acid and its conjugate? Is it B, which is ammonia and its conjugate? Is it C, uh, carbonic acid and its conjugate? Or is it D, phosphoric acid and its conjugate? Question 3 is find the pH of a buffer solution containing 0.5 moles per litre of ethanoic acid, 0.25 moles per litre of sodium ethanoate, which is its conjugate salt, with the pKa being 4.76. And the last question is calculate the buffer capacity of a 50 millilitres buffer solution after the addition of 10 millilitres of a 0.1 molarity um, solution of HCl. The initial pH was 4.75 and the final pH is 4.70. That is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.